When we talk about Viking ingenuity, most people think of their ships, sleek, fast and unstoppable. But the true genius of the Norse world wasn't only on the sea. It was in how they survived back home, through brutal winters that would freeze most modern houses solid. Their secret wasn't magic, and it wasn't brute strength. It was design. The Vikings built homes that worked with nature, not against it, structures so efficient that modern engineers still study their thermal performance today. And in the Arctic, where fuel was scarce and death came quickly to the unprepared, these homes were nothing short of a survival miracle. So, before you think your insulated modern home could handle what the Vikings faced, think again. They built something that didn't just keep out the cold, it harnessed it. The Vikings built into the earth because the ground itself was their insulation. The Viking longhouse was more than just a shelter, it was a thermal machine. In regions where temperatures plunged far below freezing, these early Norse builders understood something modern construction often forgets. The earth is the best insulator nature ever made. The deeper you go, the more stable the temperature becomes. That's why many Viking homes weren't fully above ground. They were partially dug into the earth, with their floors set below the surrounding landscape. The walls were packed with turf, dense layers of soil and grass that trapped air and moisture while blocking the wind. Turf was essentially a living insulation panel, with the roots acting like natural binding material. When archaeologists excavated Viking Age homes in Iceland and Greenland, they found turf walls as thick as a man's arm span, sometimes up to two meters. Even in temperatures below minus 20 degrees Celsius, the interiors stayed around 10 to 15 degrees once the central hearth was lit. Those same designs have been replicated by modern Arctic researchers and, well, the results are astonishing. When compared to a modern wood cabin, turf-covered earth homes actually lose heat three times slower. That's not folklore, it's physics. The Arctic doesn't just bring cold, it brings relentless wind. A tall structure is a liability in that kind of environment. The Vikings understood this long before meteorological science existed. Their homes were built low to the ground, with a long, gently arched roof line. That curve wasn't aesthetic. It was aerodynamic. It let the wind roll over the house instead of slamming into it. Inside, the roof worked like a heat trap. Warm air from the central fire would rise, hit the turf-lined ceiling, and stay circulating within the living area. The rafters were often made from bent timber or even whalebone in coastal regions, covered with thick layers of sod, moss, and animal hides. This setup prevented draughts, reduced condensation, and added even more thermal mass to hold heat. You know, one fascinating detail found in some longhouses is a layer of dried seaweed used between roof materials. Seaweed, rich in trapped salt crystals and air pockets, acted like a primitive vapour barrier, absorbing humidity while preventing dripping condensation. Modern green builders still use this exact principle, now called hygroscopic buffering. The Vikings had it a thousand years ago. Inside a Viking longhouse, the layout was simple but brilliant. The hearth sat in the centre, not against a wall like modern fireplaces, but directly under the highest part of the roof. This ensured that heat radiated evenly 
in every direction. Families, livestock and food storage all shared the same space, turning the home into a living ecosystem of warmth. Animal heat wasn't wasted, you know. Cattle and goats were often kept in partition stalls at one end of the longhouse. Their body heat added several degrees to the room temperature, and their presence actually created a natural humidity balance that kept the air from becoming too dry. The compact design also reduced heat loss, since there was just less open space for warmth to escape. In the evenings, people would sleep on raised wooden platforms or benches filled with straw and covered in animal skins. The floor itself, being below ground level, stayed cooler and pulled damp air downward, while the raised beds trapped the warm air higher up. The entire system, from roof to hearth to bed, was one coordinated thermal structure, optimized for survival before the word engineering even existed. You know, one of the most remarkable aspects of Viking design is that it was entirely renewable. Every material used, turf, timber, moss, bone, stone, came directly from the local environment. These homes didn't just survive Arctic conditions. They left no ecological scar. When abandoned, they literally returned to the earth. Modern architects call this biodegradable building. The Vikings just called it living. Their construction methods didn't require tools or fuel beyond what was already on hand, and yet they created structures that lasted for decades. Some turf homes in Iceland, built centuries after the Viking Age using the same methods, are still standing today. Their thermal performance exceeds many modern eco-houses, particularly when measured by fuel consumption per square metre. It's no wonder that during World War II, Scandinavian engineers revisited Viking-style turf shelters to house soldiers and civilians in frozen conditions. They found that turf-insulated dugouts required half as much fuel to maintain livable temperatures compared to wooden barracks. Once again, the Viking blueprint proved unbeatable. If you're interested in practical application, the same principles can be used for modern Arctic shelters, homesteads, or even root cellars. Start by using the land as insulation build partially into a slope, or dig into level ground. Construct thick, compacted earth or sod walls, and cover your structure with a gently sloped turf roof. If you're using wood framing, add a layer of packed clay or sand between inner and outer walls to replicate the Viking's thermal mass. For roofing, a combination of dried moss and straw under sod works exceptionally well for moisture control and insulation. And, you know, don't forget ventilation. Small, controllable air vents placed low and high keep air fresh without massive heat loss. The principle is simple. Store heat in the house itself. Once the mass of the walls, floor and roof warms up, it will continue to radiate warmth for hours, even after your fire goes out. It's quite fascinating, isn't it? What's remarkable about the Viking home isn't just that it worked. It's that it worked better than many systems we still rely on today. It required no machinery, no chemical insulation, and no energy bills. It used nature's constants, earth, air, fire, and design. 
truly a marvel of its time. Modern housing tends to fight the environment. Viking architecture cooperated with it. That's why these homes could stand for decades in conditions that would destroy most modern materials. Quite a testament to their ingenuity. And perhaps that's the real lesson here. Survival isn't about overpowering nature. It's about understanding it deeply enough to live in harmony with it. If you found this exploration of Viking engineering insightful, subscribe to In the Beginning, share it with fellow history enthusiasts, and keep digging into the technologies our ancestors mastered long before modern tools existed. The best survival secrets aren't futuristic. They're buried in the past. Quite intriguing, don't you think?